Hey everyone, welcome back to another Interstellar KSP tutorial and I am happy that I can finally play a little bit and uh, I've got a little bit of time. Today we're going to be doing the DS Vista tutorial. This is uh, the the sort of nuclear engine, whatever the hell it's called, nuclear slash fuel engine that produces uh, quite a lot of power at very very little uh, at very very little ISPs and even further little ISPs if the throttles down. This is I believe one of the coolest engines out there. If not the it is the most efficient I would say. Now, uh this engine requires if you haven't went through all my powers and all the other tutorials for the thermal uh for the interstellar uh for the interstellar pack, I suggest you do that. Uh because I'm gonna be going through a couple of things that I presume you should know by now at this stage. But still, I'm going to try to keep it more to the, the, the beginner side. So this being said, now the engine itself requires two things. One, it requires a continuous supply of 2.5 gigawatts. And uh, two, it requires liquid fuel. Of course, uh, to have a continuous supply of 2.5 gigawatts, you can use your power relays to supply the 2.5 gigawatts, continuous power. Or you can stick on your own reactor. So I have did the, I designed a very quick one. So here we have it. So I have my reactor, fusion reactor, with my generator, which gives me a little bit more because the smaller size, the 2.5 size, this is the 3.75, the 2.5 size only cranks out 1.4 gigawatts, which is, I thought, much less than I expected. But this one cranks out enough to keep it supplied. Okay? And then the next thing, I have my liquid fuel. I remove the oxidizer. This thing only requires liquid fuel and power. The DS Vista requires liquid fuel and power. 2.5. Uh, 5 gigawatts of continuous power and liquid fuel. Okay? And the second thing, again, this is another thing, actually, now since we're talking about it, I'm not sure, but it might require more power the more you crank up on it. Varies the specific impulse rather than the energy output. Uh, so it's 2.5 gigawatts even on minimum power. Now the question is, if I crank it up, will it still take 2.5 gigawatts? I presume so. Anyways, we'll test this out. I never bothered figuring that one out. So anyways, so we have electricity with the reactor on the electric generator. Of course, the moment you have a reactor, you got to have uh, the, uh, the whatever, the, the ones that the radiators to get rid of the heat. And then because I am using the fusion reactor, I need a continuous supply, especially with the new update. Now they really make it that I can't jump start it with the batteries. Do I really need a continuous supply to keep the fusion reactor going? So I have my small little electric generator and my fusion reactor. So this gives me a continuous supply to keep this reactor going. I hope this makes sense. So I have a small, uh, small electric supply to keep my fusion reactor online. And my fusion reactor online, since it's online, it will crank up a hell of a lot more power. And of course, I have uh, my fuel, and I remove the oxidizer, and I have my uh, radiators. So that's pretty much it. Let's launch. I hope I didn't hit back. The one big disadvantage with this is, though it being the coolest engine, is that any Kerbal outside a radius of whatever, 4 or 5, whatever, how many kilometers it is, don't, don't quote me for the distance, around, let's say, 4 or 5 kilometers, maybe more, maybe less, I, got, I don't know, is the fact that it's radioactive. So if any Kerbal is outside, it'll be dead. So you see radiation hazard to three Kerbals. So I'll disable the radiation safety. I don't really care. And uh, put on my SAS. And here we go. Charged particles is the amount of power that you're currently producing. So in case your charged particles goes down to zero, it means you're not cranking up enough power. So now if I right click this little baby, and it, it shows me fuel flow zero point. It's so little. Specific impulse is 15,000. And take a look. It's using so little liquid fuel. And, and it is picking up speed. Again, don't forget that I have quite, quite, quite a lot of weight here. It is a lot of weight, especially these two. So if I have my power relay, and I don't have my reactor, and I don't have my electric generator, that's a hell of a lot less weight. And this thing will be flying, flying. It's, it's ridiculously fast. So that being said, at full throttle, I have 1,100, uh, whatever, kilonewtons, whatever, thrust, 1,100 thrust, and specific impulse is 15,000. Now, this is why I said this is the most fuel-efficient engine, especially when you're in space, because I don't have the problem of atmosphere, or even if I'm in atmosphere, because this ship is very heavy, but if I use my power relays and I want to have this, I really wouldn't need to be at full thrust. If I reduce my thrust, I can still maintain my velocity going up. It means my speed wouldn't be going down so much. And I would, the more I reduce my thrust, you see the specific impulse shoots, skyrockets. So imagine in space with one or two of these, I can have my specific, I can have my thrust, let's say at 
quarter and I'm at 55,000 specific impulse. That's insane. That really means that you're burning your fuel so, so, so slow. So it's, it's, it's really amazingly fuel efficient, this thing. So yeah, that's another cool thing that you can keep in mind. So when you're in space and you have a good amount of speed, you don't need to be too greedy. If you can wait a few minutes to make your, I don't know, burn to the moon, to whatever minimums, to whatever you want, you can take a little bit of a slower burn and you can save a hell of a lot more fuel because this thing is ridiculously fuel efficient. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. As always, happy gaming. Take care and see you in another tutorial. Take care. Bye. And don't forget to check my game out.